<laughs> so listen, so, so after a great deal of thought and much deliberation, I simply decided to call it Listen, because it ain't rocket science, essentially that's all I do, really. I listen, I listen to you, the audience, the real stars of the show. <laughs> I mean, it's you that comes up with the banter, that comes up with the, the, the laughs to the tears, the rants, the raves. And God forbid if ever I should get too big for my boots, you're the ones that put me in my place and remind me that I'm here to do a job. And that job is to what? It's to listen. Listen, listen that's right. But tonight, I'm gonna do something a little different, if that's okay with you guys. I'm gonna ask you to listen to me for a moment because I have something I'd like to share with you that I've not shared with anyone but the closest members of my family. So, uh, big breath, here we go. Monday the 10th of September. It's raining, again. <laughs> it's the sort of day that you can't see one side of the Mersey from the other and it's bloody miserable and that's exactly how I feel. Miserable. Imagine the worst hangover that you've ever had and times it by ten. <laughs> Ouch. Chemo is a swine. It leaves you, um, it leaves you washed up, it leaves you washed out, but it also leaves you with hope. And sometimes that all, and sometimes that's all I feel that I have at the moment. Hope. Julie, my nurse, she's the power of good. She's a force of nature. She also has the gift of the gab and is always keen to tell me how brave I've been and what a hero I am. But as I, I learn about the three children that she brings up, the husband that she cares for, the two buses she takes every single day to go to work, I tell her I know who the real hero is. Mm. <laughs> Once the chemo session is over, Julie, she tells me to rest up for a couple of days and I tell her I'm going to be on air at midnight. <laughs> she ticks me off, but I tell her I know the quickest road to recovery will be me spending time with the people who mean the most to me. My audience. I tell her that the show must go on. Are we ready for some questions? Oh, oh hello, Sue. Yes. Do you have a question for Lawrence? Lawrence, can I ask just about you? Oh, forget it. Can I just give you a bloody big hug instead? <laughs> Yes, you go. Yes, you go. Oh, I do you have any more questions? <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, why do you think you have such a unique bond with your listeners on Night Talk? The um, amazing thing is um, that I, I couldn't believe actually how many people actually felt that they'd been left behind. That they'd actually been marginalised in some capacity, that uh, they had no voice. And that is ever more apparent with people that work nights or who struggle to function during the day due to trauma or well, they've got something else going on in their lives. And that is when I realised that I had an important part to play in their lives. That I could be that person they could talk to that would listen. I could be that friend in need. It 
So in answer to your question, yes, there is a bond, a genuine bond between me and my audience. It's indelible, it's unbreakable, because I have a feeling, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we trust each other. We get each other. But the thing is, when I'm talking to you lot on the radio, I genuinely forget that I'm live on air. No, it feels like two old mates down the local boozer in front of a roaring fire, putting the world to rights over a couple of pints. So the first round's on me.